Nicely done, nicely done, that was beautiful. Wow, right out in the middle, that was amazing. I've never seen it be that aggressive. Hey everybody, John here. Today is Saturday, this marks the 20th day of testing full self-driving beta for me. I'm gonna see if the car can take me all the way from Garfield Park Conservatory to the Northwest suburbs up to Schaumburg without any interventions. We have a 50 minute drive here and we are all set to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and double tap down and the car begins moving. We're gonna see here if it can get me out of this parking lot. Cutting it really close to the curb there, but still pulled out very well. I, I would say I would give that a B plus, maybe an A minus. All right, coming up here, it's gotta take a sharp left. Hesitating, not sure exactly how far to turn and adjusting. So now it has to go through this gate. So we're, it's gonna turn right here and so far so good there's some pedestrians coming and it is going for it wow right out in the middle that was amazing i've never seen it be that aggressive and it speeds up right here someone coming up behind me we're going 35 miles per hour max so it's creeping up to 35 right now and here we are at our set speed nicely done it got out of that parking lot so beautifully i've never seen that before it was very, very quick to get out too. It didn't interrupt anybody around me. That is what you want. You don't want this thing annoying other drivers. And that's one of the biggest uh, concerns that I have, so much so that, and I think Tesla should really be doing this on their own. They should be handing out for anybody that has full self-driving beta, you are doing a disservice to the community around you in a lot of cases because it is definitely not complete. Full self-driving beta is still in beta form and it's expected to make mistakes at least I expect it to. Everybody that's testing it right now expects it to make mistakes. But since it is very dangerous, and since it also drives very, as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, very erratically, other drivers should be made aware that this is a test. So what I did is I went out and bought this sticker, FSD Beta Robo Taxi in Training. It's a little bit crazy. I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna use it. So the car just slowed down there, by the way, um, and I'm watching very cl closely here. There's nobody behind me. Um, but you do have to monitor the car at all times and you do need to be very, very careful. Other people also need to be careful if they know that you're kind of testing things. So that's why I think it's appropriate. I think kind of polite or it's, it feels like the right thing to do to let people around you know that you're, you're using this beta software. So what's interesting is there, just back a little bit, I was looking a lot at the camera. I don't usually do that while I'm driving, but as I was doing that, I thought I might get an, an alarm message pop up on the screen. I did not, even though I was looking away. Um, one person in one of the chats had asked if I could test basically looking at your phone in front of the car. So if you look down, the camera will detect that your head is pointing down, but someone asked well what about if you're not looking down but you're looking at your you're still looking at your phone and i don't think that would make any difference so in other words i don't think you'd get any errors so we're going to test it i i'm using my phone to record right now and i've got my gopro camera here recording the front so what i'm going to do is pretend like i'm using the phone and see if it gives me the trigger but i'm going to do it when it's safe and when i'm not at an intersection here so the car is trying to turn right. I probably would have turned right, and there is a, a path on the right already. You can see that car just went. I'm nudging it forward a little bit. Tiny intervention. I don't want to be rude to the person behind me. Really should have gotten in the far right lane there to make that turn. Coming up here, it needs to go between a whole bunch of cars. You can see that white car leading the way. We're going to see if it does actually follow. So it's creeping forward, checking for visibility. Okay, and here we go forward okay not bad and up here it's going to merge onto the onto the highway okay correcting itself a little bit getting in the middle lane yes this is exactly where it needs to be and then after this intersection after we go over here it needs to go left a little bit getting a little bit confused somebody's right behind me okay it's pushing through now it's turning on the left blinker exactly what it needs to do very good. Okay. And getting onto the highway here. And it looks like we have stop and go traffic. So this is one of the best situations to be using this software. We're gonna see if it can merge. So don't be rude. Come on now, beta. Okay, 
Come on, left blinker. You got to you got to put on your left blinker. Okay, I had to put it on to be polite. <laughs> it really should have put on the left blinker there, but it did not. So now is a good time to do that test. So basically, if I were to basic hold my hand up like this in front of the windshield, I'm just going to pretend like I'm looking at my phone. And I'm just every so often I'm going to look up at the at the road. But I'm going to hold it up here now. I don't I can't think of any practical reason why somebody would be holding their phone in front of the steering wheel like this. But I'm not looking at the road. I'm looking at my hand, which is could potentially be my phone. And we're going to see if we get a message. So I'm not looking at the road. I mean, I am peripherally, but my hand my eyes are staring at my hand, which is mimicking a phone. There, beta just changed lanes, and it is safe to change lanes. So I, I can't drive and not look at the road. I'm, I'm peeking around to check the road and the rearview mirror. But as you can see, I'm not getting any messages whatsoever. I'm trying my very best to stare at my hand without, and this is again, <laughs> something I would personally never do. But it's, it's a good test. So as you can see right now, it's not throwing any type of alarm. So as long as your eyes and your head are facing forward, generally speaking, it will not throw any alarms. It, again, only happens if you put your head down or you close your eyes or squint your eyes too much. So it's get, good to get those tests out of the way early on just so I know what not to do. And I hope that that can be educational to other people. The fear that I have when I do this stuff like that is that people come down really hard in the comments and say, you should be paying attention to the road. Or what are you doing? Are you crazy? You're gonna be kicked out of beta. All, all these trolls will come out, come out of the woodworks and start hammering on me. And I'm not that big on YouTube right now. I don't know if I ever will be, but I'd rather not have a bunch of people coming down on me hard for stuff like that. I'm doing this as a service so that everybody can understand how this system works. And I hope that it helps and benefits other people. And I certainly hope that I don't get kicked out of beta. I mean, that would be the worst situation. But uh, it's also important to push it to the limits, to understand what you can and can't do. Because there, like I said before, there's no instruction manual that comes with full self-driving beta. You get the release notes and it shows some of the patches. But other than that, you're on your own. And that's an area where I really think Tesla could improve. They should send out an email or give a disclaimer. They should have some sort of information about what to expect and what not to expect. So another question I received is from Hani, who runs uh, the Michigan Tesla Model 3 Owners Club, I think is the name of the group on Facebook. And he was asking, what happens if you put sunglasses on? Do you get the warning message? I have not tested that, so let's see if it, let's see what happens. Okay, so, so far I'm not receiving any messages and this confirms that it is not really looking at your eyeballs at a, in all situations. It does definitely look at the orientation of your head. So if I put my head down, and if I keep it down, even if I look at the road, There's the message, please pay attention to the road. So 
that took longer than I thought it would, but this is proving right now that the sunglasses don't have any effect on how full self-driving beta disengages itself as long as you're looking straight forward. Alright, so coming up here we need to stay in the right lane. Looks like it took the correct path. And changing lanes, getting into the right. Changing lanes out of the passing lane is the message I use see here. And attempting to change lanes here into a faster lane. Okay, there we go. now attempting to change out of passing lanes. Someone else is coming up on my right side though, so it will not execute that lane change as soon as they pass. So now someone else is coming up and it still won't execute the change. Waiting for them to pass and now getting out of the passing lane. And now changing into a faster lane can't make up its mind. It wants to go faster and then get over and get out of the passing lane. So I do have it dialed into 63. To get past these, it's going to have to go faster than that. So now it's changing out of passing lane. So a lot of back and forth and back and forth. Definitely robotic driving. And there the screen transition to night mode. So it will do that automatically when the sun goes down or when the sun comes up. 4.27 p.m. All right, so it's changing lanes to follow route. We have to get off of this next exit, so it's preparing nice and early, doing a very good job here. And as soon as we get off on this exit, there's a left turn that is a very sharp angled turn. And even as a human driver, it's very difficult to avoid the curb. The median is right there, and a lot of people end up hitting it. So we're gonna see if the car can maneuver its its way through here. So if it gets in the far left turn lane, that's when we need to be especially careful. If we're in the second to left turn lane, then it's not as much of a big deal. But we're going to find out here which lane the car puts us in. Really doesn't matter which lane. So this 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 is the far left right turn lane, but coming up here after we get off the exit that's the question. Is it going to get in the left lane or in the far left lane? Okay, so slowing down. Ooh. Wow, so that Jeep there didn't know what, what they were doing. Okay, let's see here how it does this. This is the first time I've had the car come through here. So it does need to go left. Okay, so now it's getting in the left Okay, it's choosing the left, the far left lane. This is the challenging turn because if it doesn't turn at the exact right moment, you can clip the median. It's not, not a very pretty median to run into with your tires. So we're gonna see how it handles it here. And the right, right turn signal is turning on. That was really weird because if it had actually tried to turn right, it would confuse a lot of people. Okay, it's turning left, the left blinker on now. Left turn signal. Okay, now this is gonna be hard, so I might have to take over here, come on. Okay, so it sees the curb there. 
Nicely done. Nicely done. That was beautiful. No issues there. I got a little bit nervous. It corrected itself halfway through the turn. Changing lanes to follow route. Didn't really need to do that, but I'll let it. So it cut in in front of someone, and they were, you know, that was a that was a very small gap that it just squeezed itself into. So upcoming lane change, it's going to be turning left here. It recognizes that it's going to have to get in the left lane. So any second it will turn on the left turn signal. All right, so it's waiting to actually turn left. It put it on far in advance. That that uh, blue bar at the top indicates that it's going to be changing lanes here pretty soon. And it keeps going and then coming away. So it's hard to predict when that will that will come up. You know, upcoming, we have to turn left coming up here, but it's not for a little ways yet. So I was surprised that came up so early. We're going to see if it goes away. And it mentions on the screen you can tap to cancel the lane change. There's no need for me to, to cancel that right now. See, there it went away again, and now it's coming back. So it, it's almost like it can't make up its mind. And now it comes up again, so 0.8 miles. So it was almost one mile back there that it was already trying to prepare. And I imagine it's looking at the traffic around me before executing the left turn, because it keeps popping up. Now there's a gap. It could have taken that, but it chose not to. I'm not sure why it doesn't execute sooner. That message shows up very, very early. We've driven almost a half mile now where it hasn't initiated a left turn at all. So, okay, now it's initiating. There we go. Okay, and then it needs to get in the left lane here. And okay, there it comes. Okay, good. A little bit late, but I'll forgive it. Not too bad, slowing down. So this is a, a tricky intersection to get through. Now it's putting the left blinker on as if it wants to get over. Okay, it canceled out of that. So it was trying to get into the far left turn, left turn lane. It's turning it back on again. So this is some quirky behavior I've observed. So it's turning on the left blinker and then turning it back off again. So, you know, one could take that as I'm trying to move into the left, left turn lane, but one could also just take it as, hey, I'm going left here. And a lot of people here usually have their left turn signals on. You can't see any right now in view, but to my left, there's a... There are the street lights. I just saw the street lights turn on. I love when I, when I was a kid, if I could catch the street lights turning on, it was a lucky day. I would always rejoice. Okay, so here we go. Time, time for the car to start going through this intersection. This is a tricky one. We're going to see if it can handle it. There are, the lines are painted very well. Okay, and there we go. Straight through. Very nice. Okay, it didn't change. It was a little bit jerky there. It's, it, it braked about halfway or, or three quarters of the way through that turn. Wasn't too impressed with that. But so far, we've had one intervention to get through an intersection early on, and then we had another intervention. I'm going to call it half of an intervention to turn the left turn signal in to merge into the traffic. It would have done it anyway, but just out of courtesy, so I'm not weaving my way into someone else's path. Uh, it was polite. It was the polite and the right thing to do is to turn on the left turn signal. So one and a half interventions 
Not bad for a 50 minute drive. And turning on the left turn signal, getting over nice and early this time. That was well done. It chose the gap. If it had missed that, it would not be able to turn left up here. It would have ran out of space because there are quite a few cars behind me at the moment. So now it's gonna go left here, getting over nice and early, very good. Great, so all said and done, I would say today's drive was a huge success. It wasn't a perfect drive, but it was close enough. I did not expect it to be perfect. In very few situations do I expect a perfect drive, but when it does happen, I'm super happy, obviously. So once this light changes here, we're gonna be able to turn left. And this is a very easy maneuver for the car, at least at this intersection. I've been driving with version 10.3 and then 10.3.1 and now 10.4 and it's never made any mistakes on this turn here. So if it does make a mistake, I'll be very surprised. That was very smooth and with that person turning right there, it slowed down, beautifully executed. And coming through this area. So uh, that concludes today's video. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.